En fait, ça fait longtemps que j'ai joué Je suis en train de mon team pour un temps. La première année, c'est ce qui m'a motivé le plus. Ça a été une longue année pour mettre en place mon associé, Michael Vignon, avec Michael Vignon, qui m'a décidé de créer cette VRT3 équipe. Avec une VRT3 équipe. Au début, to start with, I was skeptical because I work elsewhere, but then I said yes, and it was either do it flat out or don't do it at all. I'm determined to win the title, and doing that with my own team motivates me even more. It's our third season together. I came out of bad experiences with teams that had collapsed mid-season, and the second thing that really motivated me was to give me greater means to my brother so that it would cost my father less money. We're a family team because at the moment we don't have any other riders. Sometimes you have to put family considerations to one side in order to work. Working together isn't always easy when we've got strong characters. I'd say it's easier to be critical of family members than someone from the outside. I'm really proud that we have our own team, our own sponsors, our own bikes with the style we choose. Since I've had the team, it's been about taking things step by step. Hard work pays off and rider consistency. For us, it's down to structure, preparing the bike, training, organizing the trips, and everything that goes with that. We're learning, and with any startup, it's not always straightforward. Valentin has a situation that's different to mine. He was riding up front in championships when he set up his structure. I'm still looking at how he operates, and it's very different to me. Every day there are decisions you take in life, and when you say to yourself, bloody hell, I don't know what to do, maybe I shouldn't have to go into this, it's not always easy. In any case, that's my life. The day I've no longer the desire to win and no longer want to make the sacrifices, then that's the day I should call the sponsors and move on to do something else. I think I'll stop motocross the day I'm no longer capable of being in the leading positions in the French Championship. I'm still up there and I've got the desire to be there for longer still. I was a private rider and had my own sponsors. I got by on my own with my girlfriend and I had a mechanic who came every race. What motivated me was to be able to learn from him, have the logistics and get his advice. He helped me on a physical level with the bike in terms of my technique and everything. I don't necessarily bring him a lot as a team manager, it's true that it's all new to me. But as a current rider, I'll try and help him with his riding. We train together, for me that's a plus for him too. He runs things really well, and Mikhail is also there to help with the logistics, ordering parts and all that. Everything's well organized, and they complement each other. Getting back on top this year was my objective, and I revealed it to those close to me. If I don't manage to do it straight away and manage to find for podium finishes every weekend, then it'll be time to stop. I had a difficult year and a half with an injury and being back on top and smelling victory, well, it smells sweet. It makes me want to work even harder and it's easier to run the team in these conditions. It's more motivating. It's true, I'd like to get some youngsters on board and make sure they don't make some of the mistakes I made. It's only the start of things, but I want to go a long way with this. I want to develop my team so that we can compete at world level, for example. After 
a rainy night which dampened the track, the weather was clement for the fourth round of the 24 MX Tour. Now onto the highlights for the MX2 and MX1 categories. Off the first start, Jimmy Clochet got the whole shot. The Suzuki rider was away quickly in front of Aubin's second. Then Bossier, Goupillon and Richier to compete for the top five. Nicolas Dercourt made a poor start but hammered away to climb up to fifth, helped by Arnaud Aubin. Mistake. Third at the time, Aubin's error dropped him to seventh. Plenty happened in the leading positions approaching the finish. Richier lifted the tempo and first of all overtook. In front of him, after fighting it out with Richier, Anthony Bossier had to concede second best to the Suzuki rider. He proved his double at Castelnau wasn't down to luck. He's quick and he finished third. Florent Richier took second and consolidated his position as the wearer of red plates as championship leader. A major then for Jimmy Clochet winning the first MX2 race at the handlebars of his Suzuki. He puts in the perfect race in order to claim it. Off the second start, Pierre Goupillon hits the front with Thomas Doe on his wheel, but the young KTM rider made a little mistake that left the door open for Thomas Doe to reclaim the lead. Behind them, Jimmy Clochet is in the top 10 and pushing hard as he knows the overall honours for the day are up of grabs. Third at one time, Arnaud Aubin can't find his pace and loses a few spots. He ends up seventh, just behind Florent Richer. At the end of the race, Dercourt comes up like a train on Clochet to take third from him on his last lap. Dercourt is fifth overall for the day. Pierre Goupillon scored his best performance of the season with a fine second place overall on the day. Thomas Doe won the second race and finished third overall. Reward at last for him after an off-color start to the season. The day's podium then, Clochet, Goupillon and Doe. Richier still tops the championship, nine points ahead of Giraud. Over in XMX1, Greg Arnada took pole, nine tenths in front of Valentin Teillet. Despre, Boug and Aubin followed on. The big names right up there. The first hole shot goes to Maxime Despre, though he's soon caught by Valentin Teillet, throwing everything at it. The two men battle it out for a few laps. Despre takes over the lead before failing on the same lap and letting the man from the Vendée region fly away. Throughout the first part of the race, Xavier Boug and Milo Potisek fought it out for fourth. In the end of the championship league, Boug wins out there. Nicolas Aubin is proving consistent again and scores a fine third place, an important result for his title hopes. And after his error, Mac Maxime Dupré is unable to make up the gap on Teyer. The Bud Racing rider finishes 8.8 .8 seconds behind the Honda number 737. Once in control, Teyer was untouchable at ease all race long and leaving no hope to his rivals. He made the most of that close up to seven points on Xavier Boum. Down goes the starting gate, and the MX1 riders are away again. Nicolas Aubin gets the whole shot with Teillet, Clermont, and Depre alongside him. Boog gets caught up in a fall and ends up getting going again in last position. He needs to try to salvage points for the championship and manages to claw his way to seventh. Gregory Arnada manages a fifth after a seventh and first, first race. He finishes the day seventh. By finishing fourth, Maxime Dupré ensures he'll be on the podium when the two races are done. After a couple of rounds away at the World Championship, the Bud Rider is fighting for a place on the championship podium. But now the man in front of him is the French championship, Nicolas Aubin. Third again in his race, he's second for the day and climbs a spot in the championship standings to third. Absent in Castelnau de Lévis, Demont Grolleu is back in the elite position after an eighth in the first race. He finishes second here and even tried to put pressure on Valentin Teille in the closing laps. Nobody could cope with Teille again in the second round. A perfect double for him with an eye on taking the title. 
After his misadventures in Castelnau, he is right back on his game and is now putting pressure on Boo in the standings. The gap down to nine points. Teo wins the round from Orban Depre. Boog is still the championship leader. The next round is May 20th and 21st at Saint-Tibéry.